What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I want to do a video that I've been toying with for a long time in my head and that is to get to the nitty-gritty of which is best in 2018 as of September lithium batteries or lead acid batteries for solar applications. I get a lot of comments on my three or four year old videos about batteries for solar and people want to promote lithium. Well, back then it wasn't a viable option because there weren't very many lithium batteries and there certainly weren't any commercially available lithium charge controllers. That has all changed now. And as you've seen, if you follow my channel, I actually sell lithium batteries from Miller Tech. I also sell lithium specific charge controllers from a company called Genesun. So, and there are lots of others on the market. So it's finally time to determine which one is better for 2018, lithium batteries or lead acid batteries. When I say lithium batteries, I am speaking specifically of lithium iron phosphate, by the way. Before we get started, there's a lot of math ahead. So anyone who doesn't like that, hit the back button now. Next, let's go ahead and take care of some general assumptions. These battery types are a little bit different. Lithium batteries are okay to discharge generally down to 0%, whereas lead acid batteries should only be discharged to about 50% to maximize their life. Some of you may want to argue that point. Lead acid batteries can discharge past 50%, yes. However, to maximize their life cycles, that's generally a good stopping point and it's generally best practice. What this means for the analysis is we're going to have to pick a lead acid battery that has twice the amp hour capacity as the lithium battery. That way when we discharge the lead acid battery to 50%, we will have expended the same amount of energy as the lithium battery discharging to zero. And for easier math, we're going to go ahead and assume that we're going to fully cycle the battery each day year round. So once again, that will mean we're going to completely discharge the lithium down to zero and we're going to discharge the lead acid to 50%. So let's pick out the batteries. For the lead acid, I've chosen the Trojan T105RE battery. This is my favorite lead acid battery and it's generally considered the gold standard, at least the T105 is. And the RE version is just the renewable energy version which is only slightly different than the T105. So this is the incumbent. It's been used for a lot of years in solar and it's tried and true. This is a six volt battery with 225 amp hours of capacity and a five year warranty. However, Trojan designed it to last for 10 years and under certain circumstances it'll get there easily. For the Lithium Challenger, I've chosen the Miller Tech 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Like I said, I personally sell these. It's a very popular size and it's as close as I could get to half the size of the Trojan. This is a 12 volt battery with 100 amp hours of capacity and a five year warranty. Once again, this is designed to last for 10 years, so just because the warranty ends at 5 doesn't mean that it's dead at 5 years. So here is the cycle life chart for the Trojan T105RE battery. You'll notice that this chart is not linear, so the more that you discharge the battery on a regular basis, the more you're going to shorten the life of the battery. So since we're going to discharge this battery to 50%, that equals about 1700 cycles of useful life of this battery. 1700 cycles give up, gives us about 4.6 years of constant cycling use every day. For the MillerTech lithium battery, I couldn't find the exact same chart showing depth of discharge versus cycle life, but this chart assumes 100% depth of discharge, which is exactly our same assumption, so it works just fine. The useful life of a lithium battery is to about 80% capacity, and so at 100% discharge every day, we're going to get about 2700 cycles out of this battery. 2700 cycles equals 7.4 years of constant use. The next thing that we need to consider is the cost of the batteries. The Trojan is only a 6 volt battery, so to equal the lithium battery we need to get two of these. I found a kind of middle of the road price, this isn't the highest, it's not the lowest certainly, but about $170 a piece, so $340 to get a lead acid battery that's comparable to the lithium. Trojan batteries are available nationwide through an extensive dealer network, so you can pick them up locally and avoid shipping charges. The Miller Tech Lithium battery is $879.99. That's the MSRP, and since I'm the only online distributor of these batteries, that's what the price is. Miller Tech is one of the cheaper lithium battery manufacturers, so this price is actually really good for lithium. You will have to pay shipping charges to get this sent to you as there are no local distributors. However, it's pretty cheap since lithium batteries are lightweight. So we're not going to factor that into our math. 
Okay, so we need two of the lead acid batteries at $170 a piece, and that equals 340 US dollars. Since there are 225 amp hours of battery there, that equals $1.51 per amp hour, which is really affordable. And if you take $340 and divide it by the 4.65 years of useful service, that equals $73.11 per year. Moving on to lithium, one battery is $880. Uh, if you divide that by 100 amp hour capacity, that's $8.80 per amp hour. And if you take that $880 divided by the 7.4 years of useful service, that equals $118.92 per year. Now I know what some of you are already thinking, oh, they're going to last a lot longer than 2700 cycles. It's just, that's only 80% capacity retention, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fair enough. Let's say that they last a 3,500 cycles and rerun the numbers. If you take that $880 price, divide it by 9.6 years, which is 3,500 cycles, that equals $91.67 per year. So we're still nowhere near the cost effectiveness of lead acid batteries at this point. In fact, that lithium battery would have to last 12 years or 4,394 cycles to equal the exact same dollar per year as the lead acid battery. And that's assuming that the battery capacity stays at 100%, and we know it doesn't. At 2,700 cycles, the battery capacity is only 80%, so at 3,500, 4,000 cycles, it could be down to 60, 50%, which makes the number even worse. Now looking at this another way, over a 25 year period, which matches up with how long your solar panels are going to last you, the lead acid batteries will cost you a total of $1,800 to replace them every time they die. With lithium batteries, assuming the 2700 cycles, that's going to cost you about $3,000. And if we, th if we say that the lithium batteries really last 3500 cycles, that brings it down to about $2,300. So clearly we have a winner here. The lead acid battery is still king in cost per amp hour and cost per year. There are many ways that lithium is better than lead acid and I've detailed those in other videos. You don't have to maintain them, on and on and on. They're smaller, they're lighter weight, so forth. And if you ever have to ship a big heavy lead acid battery, forget about it. The cost savings goes swings over to the lithium at that point. So let the debate continue, but let's put this to rest that lead acid is still the better buy, at least financially at this point. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found my video informative, go ahead and hit subscribe so you can check out new solar content in the future.